This is example 33 in the differentiation topic. Uh, the past few examples we've been looking at parametric functions and how we can differentiate them, which means that we can then take that extra step of applying the derivative to uh, find a gradient rule which allows us then to find things like the equation of a tangent to a curve, something that uh, hopefully you are familiar with already using other differentiation techniques. So if we want to find the equation of the tangent, then we need a gradient and we need a point. So we're going to have to investigate from this function, we're going to need to generate uh, a point of tangency and also the gradient of the curve at that point. So let's take those two steps uh, one by one. We've got uh, the gradient, we want to find the gradient. So we've got two parametric equations, uh, an equation in x and an equation in y, and we can differentiate these in order to find the derivative. So x here, I'm just going to rearrange as t squared minus 1 to the power of negative 1, which means if we differentiate it with respect to t, we're going to have the chain rule going on here, negative 1 as a power multiplied by t squared minus 1, reduced to power by 1, multiplied by the derivative of the inside term, which is 2t, which I can then uh, rearrange as negative 2t over t squared minus 1 squared. y term is a wee bit more straightforward. Our y function is dt, so dy by dt just differentiates to 3. So we have one fraction in our two derivatives. Uh, so normally in that kind of situation, I would, if I was writing out my dy by dx, sometimes you can write it just like this and put the two terms, one on top of the other uh, in the fraction. That's good if it's just, uh, if there's no fractions involved. But if you want to avoid a kind of fraction pileup, then you can just write them separately. dy by dt divided by dx by dt. That just keeps them separate and allows you to be in control of what's there a little bit better. So dy by dt will work out as 3 divided by dx by dt negative 2t over t minus 1 of squared. So we can simplify or change that around. I'm going to bring the negative sign in front of the 3 because either way we know that negative is going to make the whole thing negative and then we're going to switch the sign from divided to multiplying. We're going to invert the operation and to compensate for that we're going to invert the fraction. We can't simplify that before we multiply. There's nothing to cancel down. That really just leaves us with an expression negative 3 times t squared minus 1 all squared over 2t or something like that. And remember that that's an expression for our derivative. Because we're applying that now, we actually want to find the value of the gradient at one particular point, And that point is when t equals 3. So we can now use that to say that the gradient at t equals 3 is going to be negative 3 times t squared minus 1 all squared divided by 2 times 3. So we're substituting 3 in for t, which gives us negative 3 multiplied by t squared is 9, take on is 8, 8 squared is 64 divided by 6, which gives us the answer negative 32. And that is the actual value of the gradient of our curve. And so we can see effectively we're saying that at the point of tangency, the gradient of the curve equals the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the tangent is negative 32. That's the number that we're going to use in the equation of our line. So we've got one thing ticked off. We've found the gradient. 
The other thing you need to find when we're looking at uh, equations of tangents is the actual coordinates of the point of tangency. And often in a different type of function, you'll be given an x value, find the equation of the tangent to a curve when x equals 3, in which case you might have to use the original y function to work out the other coordinate. But in this case, we don't have any information about either x or y, but we do have information about t. So we know that t is 3, and go back to the original functions, and x was the function uh, 1 over t squared minus 1, and y was the function 3t. So from that, it's fairly straightforward. When t is 3, x is 1 over 3 squared minus 1, which is 1 eighth, and y becomes 3 times 3, which is 9. So the point of tangency is 1 eighth, 9. We now have the two ingredients that we need for the equation of our tangent. So we can say equation. Of the tangent, it's obviously a straight line. Y minus B equals M times X minus A. Uh, what's our point? Our point is 1 8 9, so it is an 8. B is 9, so y minus 9 equals, well, a gradient, remember earlier on, negative 32 times x minus, and our value of a is 1 eighth. In this case, it works out reasonably straightforward because we can multiply negative 32 by x, and negative 32 times an eighth is at negative an eighth is plus four. So that works out quite well. And if we were to add nine to both sides or rearrange it as you will, you end up with uh, this equation. And we end up uh, with the equation of the tangent as y equals negative 32x plus 30. So that's how we can use the parametric differentiation to work out the equation of a tangent.